Welcome back everyone, today I have a very very special review for you. I'm gonna take a look at two Gemini Jets models, one the Southwest Tennessee one and the other one is the Southwest Florida one. Now they are using two different molds, the Tennessee one is in the old Gemini Jets uh, 737-700 mold and the Florida one is the newer mold. So I'm gonna take a look at both of them and tell you my opinion on the mold. Let's get started. So first up we're gonna take a look at the box. Uh, the Tennessee one comes in this clean white box. It's uh, a Gemini Jets box, you cannot open it up to see uh, the airplane inside. But I personally like it, it is clean and white. Uh, but I see why a lot of people might think this is a boring one as there is nothing special really to it. But I still like it, I think it's an alright box. Now the Florida one comes in the exact same box basically. I think it's a good design especially with this special livery. You pay more attention to the livery instead of the box which is a nice feature and as I said I like the clean white design it's very simple uh very timeless so yeah for me those boxes are right uh, i think there could be done a little bit more with design elements just small things keep it white but like at the flap that would make it a lot better so three out of five for both of these boxes next up of course we're gonna take a look at the mold and as i said gemini jets use two different molds even though uh the releases are just like half a year apart um yeah and you can see that the newer one the florida one just looks so much better the nose actually looks like a 737 uh the winglets also look better it is just a better overall mold it looks more like a 737 as with the older one the tennessee one uh the nose is kind of just it has that weird shape the cockpit window area is not pronounced as well the winglets do not look quite as good and the big part if you look and the underneath, you can see the Tennessee C1 is a cradle mold, so it has that ugly seam on the bottom. Whereas the new mold is seamless, looks very, very nice. So, you know, I have to take off some points for the seam right there. I'm gonna give the Tennessee 1 a 6 out of 10 for the mold, and the Florida one is gonna get a 8 out of 10. Moving on, we're gonna take a look at the landing gear. Now with the older mold, the Tennessee one, you can see that landing gear is not that detailed at all. The front landing gear is quite a bit too short, which means the airplane is quite low in the front. Uh, the landing gear is uh, surely better on the Florida one. It does not roll quite as well, and detail could also be better. Anyway, it is better than the Tennessee one. The Tennessee one is gonna get a two out of five, Whereas the Florida one is going to get a solid 3 out of 5 for the landing gear. Now last but not least of course the quality which also includes the printing on the model. If we look at the Tennessee one the printing is done quite nicely. Uh, the colors are correct which is very important as livery. The red really pops looks very very nice. Now also the uh, Florida one as well looks very very nice. Uh, the printing is done a little bit better, the livery, uh, it's very complex livery, it's just done that little bit better. So I'm gonna give the Tennessee one a solid 8 out of 10 because it, they have done a very very good job representing this livery, especially with that rich red color. And the Florida one is gonna get a 9 out of 10, very very close to perfect, nice representation of this very special colorful livery. So to determine the final rating of those two models, it's time to look at every single score again. So the Tennessee one had a 3 out of 5 for the box, a 6 out of 10 for the mold, 2 out of 5 for the landing gear, 8 out of 10 for the quality, which gives it a total of 19 out of 30. Now for the Florida one, we also had a 3 out of 5 for the box, a pretty solid 8 out of 10 for the mold, 3 out of 5 for the landing gear and a very very good 9 out of 10 for the quality giving it a total score of 23 out of 30. Now to get to the final rating of this model we just take the total and divide it by 3. So for the Tennessee one we get a 6.5 and for the Florida one a 7.5. Let's see what that means for our leaderboard. Now the Tennessee one with a pretty low score of only 19 out of 30. Uh, moves in at the second to last place at 
placed 24 for the moment just in front of the British Airways 747. Of course the Florida one got a better score so let's take a look where that puts that one. I think uh, it is a little bit better than the Austrian 767 as that one has a cradle mold and this one does not. Also the livery looks very nice I'm gonna give it P14 for the moment. So pretty good actually the third best Gemini Jets model I have reviewed so far. As always, I'm gonna end off this review with my personal opinion. Now I think both models are quite alright. Uh, the Florida one really sticks out though. Uh, the mold is pretty good, especially for Gemini Jet standards, if I can say it like that. Um, also the printing, everything is very nice. The mold is very nice. I really do not understand why did they did not use the new mold for the Tennessee one, as they have been using the newer mold for a few years now. and. I don't understand, uh, the Tennessee one is just half a year old now, I don't understand why they did not use the clearly better new mold. Anyway, uh, the Florida one, I highly recommend that one, the Tennessee one, only if you really need it for your Southwest collection, otherwise I would not spend my money on this one one more time. Now that was it from my side. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. Stay tuned for Sunday where I'm going to be releasing uh, the review on the Polar Air Cargo 747-8 by Gemini Jets, the interactive series. And I have quite a lot to say, so I think this one is going to be quite an interesting video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. See you next time. Goodbye.